Epinephrine, or more commonly known as adrenaline, is a hormone associated with the fight or flight response. Upon release, it sends every organ and muscle involved in motor movement and metabolism into a peak physical response. In an adrenaline release, people have been known to withstand injuries that would stop most people and exceed strength levels of a physically fit human. Let's see why all this happens on a biochemical level. But first, has this ever happened to you? Excuse me. Oui. Uh, do you know where the Louvre is? Ah, Louvre, oui. Uh, Parlez-vous français? Whatever you do, don't say you speak French. Uh, oui, oui. No! And I have no idea what he's saying. Just nod your head and smile awkwardly. I really wish I paid attention in 6th grade French. Thankfully, through Babbel, this doesn't have to happen to you. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world. It's different from your typical language app. They don't rely on an AI to make hand exercises. Their lessons are written by real language instructors who go the extra mile to craft practical conversations, using culture, slang, and traditions to develop real-world interactions. I live in upstate New York, not too far from Montreal, so when I visit, I use Babbel to brush up on my French. Savez-vous et allez Got it, awesome. Sessions are in short 10-minute interactions, so you can practice whenever you have a few minutes throughout the day. If you click the link in the description below, you can get 65% off your Babbel subscription and a 20-day money-back guarantee. Check out Babbel today. Adrenaline is produced in the medulla, located at the center of your adrenal glands which sit on top of your kidneys. Adrenaline is released when the central nervous system goes into threat response mode. Your central nervous system, that is your brain and spinal cord, operates in two different states the parasympathetic state, and the sympathetic state. The parasympathetic state controls your normal daily functions, or simply rest and digest, like keeping your heart beating, respiration going, digestion, the boring day-to-day -day stuff. Right now, watching this video, your nervous system is in the parasympathetic state, unless you perceive this video as a threat, which is kinda weird. Is it my voice? In contrast, the sympathetic nervous system controls your fight-or-flight response, which initiates release of adrenaline, rerouting all resources to the heart, brain, and muscles, sending your body from this... Somebody else can finish it off. Do the rest of it. ...to this. <laughs> the whole process starts in the brain, specifically in the amygdala and the hypothalamus. The amygdala controls responses to fear, distress, and anger, whereas the hypothalamus controls your body's homeostasis, like body temperature, breathing, heart rate, the boring stuff. The amygdala and hypothalamus respond to threats before you're able to process it. This is why you instinctively jump out of the way of a moving car. There's no thought to it, you just do it. When the amygdala perceives a threat, it alerts the hypothalamus, which then signals the sympathetic nervous system to turn on. The first thing that happens is not release of adrenaline. Instead, the hypothalamus increases your breathing, which then signals your heart rate to increase. This is to get your circulation moving very fast, so when adrenaline is released, it gets delivered much faster. If adrenaline was released before the heart rate increased, there would be a delay between its release and its effect on your organs, and it would just be floating in your bloodstream like, hey, you know, there's a bear coming, uh, you better run. Once heart rate is up, the sympathetic nervous system via splanchic nerves stimulates the adrenal gland to release about 500 nanograms, or less than half a milligram of adrenaline, into the blood. The adrenal gland receives blood from three different arteries, allowing it to distribute adrenaline quickly and efficiently. This is where things get wild. Once in the blood, adrenaline binds to two types of receptors, called alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. Nearly every cell type in your body has these receptors, which is why adrenaline affects the entire body. When adrenaline binds to these receptors, it initiates an emergency response in different cell types, thereby changing the function of the organs that the cells make up. Both the alpha and beta receptors have different effects on organs when adrenaline binds to them. For example, when adrenaline binds to the alpha adrenergic receptors on blood vessel cells and muscle cells, blood flow and metabolism change. Blood vessels in the peripheral circulation will constrict, which reduces blood flow to areas that do not contribute to the fight-or-flight response, such as smooth muscle in your intestines. Instead, blood is diverted to the brain, heart, and muscles. Insulin is halted from being released in the pancreas to keep your blood sugar levels elevated from muscles to use for energy production. Glycogenolysis, which is the conversion of glycogen stores into glucose, is also ramped up in the liver and muscles to further convert carbohydrate stores into energy. Basically, when adrenaline binds to alpha receptors, the brain, liver, heart, and muscles get all the blood and fuel sent to them. When adrenaline binds to beta receptors, it causes maximum blood flow and maximum cardiac output. 
For blood flow, blood vessels in the heart, muscles, brain, and lungs dilate, maximizing their blood and oxygen intake. In cardiac output, the heart is signaled to beat faster and contract harder, which is why your chest is pounding during an adrenaline rush. Additional effects adrenaline has on the body are thickening of saliva, pupil dilation, reduced auditory senses, tunnel vision, and enhanced long-term memory. People have stated under an adrenaline rush that time slowed down, and a situation that was just a few minutes felt like a whole hour. This is because your brain is processing so much information per second that it feels like time is actually slower. The analogy is similar to looking out the window of a slow-moving car versus a fast-moving car. When the car is moving slower, you're able to recognize more detail, whereas in a fast-moving car, you're able to recognize less information. Your brain on adrenaline is traveling in a fast-moving car, but recognizing details at the efficiency of a slow-moving car. Adrenaline is the closest thing humans have to a superpower. Speaking of superpowers, under high adrenaline response, humans have been documented to lift weights well above normal human standards, known as hysterical strength. This isn't surprising though as the muscles are getting nearly all the blood, glucose, and oxygen they can handle. For example, in 2012 in Glen Allen, Virginia, 22-year-old Lauren Kornecki lifted her father's BMW when it fell off the jack stands, pinning him under it. In 2019, 16-year-old football player Zachary Clark lifted a 3,000-pound car off his neighbor when it fell off the jack stands while doing work on the car. However, adrenaline is not only used during the fight-or-flight response. During late stages of intense exercise, adrenaline has been found in large amounts in the blood. This is likely an evolutionary mechanism as a last-ditch effort to help us flee from predators when nearing physical exhaustion. Despite adrenaline being a useful defense mechanism from evolution, it does have some serious negative effects on our body in modern society. Recall that one of the effects of adrenaline is enhanced long-term memory, specifically from the hippocampus. This is a feature that likely helped us to recognize patterns of what tried to kill us and hold on to that memory. Then, when a stimulus occurs that's similar to the past experience, our memory goes into overdrive and lets us know that it's happening again. Patterns that could jog our memory could be colors, shapes, smells, and sounds. This was really great as cavemen when we were being chased by predators. Now, fast forward 2 million years in the future, and this memory recall from an adrenaline rush becomes post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. It's one thing to have PTSD in the wild to keep you alive, but now we live in safe, predictable environments, and yet can be triggered by a sound or smell that puts us into an aggressive survival mode, which is less likely to be needed. A study was done to observe whether adrenaline had positive, negative, or neutral effects on people. An experiment was performed where subjects were injected with adrenaline, and then shown scenes from films that induced fear, anger, and humor, and then compared results to a group that was not given adrenaline. Results revealed that the group that was given adrenaline showed strong negative emotions compared to the non-adrenaline group, regardless of the stimuli, whether it induced fear, anger, or humor. Overall, adrenaline is still a beneficial adaptation that can help us to fight or flee from danger, use immense strength, or remember dangerous encounters.